All right, so this is Geometry. Today's date is Friday, January 24th, 2020, and we are going over this packet on proving the Pythagorean theorem. So yesterday on Thursday, um, I showed you um, a diagram where we just did a purely geometric moving objects around in order to prove that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Um, just as a quick review on what we did, we moved this triangle down here, so there it is right there, and we moved this triangle to the far right, can't really see the arrow, to the far right, and move this triangle up, and you can see those two triangles right there. You can see that the unknown space here was c times c to get c squared. The unknown space there is a squared, the unknown space there is b times this length should be also b, since these are congruent triangles. b times b is b squared. The, uh, the empty space here and here adds up to the empty space there, therefore a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Um, we have to verify that um, this, I mean, this is a proof, you're done, you've proved it. But we wanna verify to see if, is that really true? So we came back here and we made both of those shapes on grid paper. We actually calculated the area of each of them and then showed that the area of these two small shapes added up to that large shape. And we, we verified it. Um, then coming down here, um, the homework was to discuss why Penelope um, or just answer these questions. So let me give you a brief overview of what Penelope did. I want to make sure we have a th really thorough understanding here. So Penelope is using right triangles. Just the fact that you're using right triangles and trying to sh somehow show a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, that is the connection to the Pythagorean theorem. I'm using right triangles, done. Pythagorean theorem is already going to be invoked somehow because I'm trying to relate the side lengths here. So um, it's kind of an unspoken rule that you can always find a right angle there. I proved it to us yesterday, but the general idea is if this is x, then this must be 90 minus x, technically 180 minus 90 minus x. Um, that simplifies to 90 minus x. Um, therefore, this angle must be x. Therefore, this must be 180 degrees because it's a straight line. 180 is equal to 90 minus x plus this unknown angle, I don't know, circle or heart, whatever variable you want, uh, plus x. And then you can simplify that in order to prove every single time that this angle is always going to be a 90 degree angle. So that's kind of a given from here on out. So this angle up here was 90 degrees for the same reason. That angle is 90 degrees. I'm not going to um, prove that again, but I know that you should be able to prove that. Um, so that is definitely a 90 degrees. Um, she starts off really strong. She starts off with the area of the trapezoid. And you kind of have to tilt your head to the left so that this is the, the top and this is the bottom. So if I think of those as the bases, the way that the formula for a trapezoid works is I add up this base and this base. I add up that base and that base. And I take half of it. I'm taking the average of those two bases. So if I do the average of the base times the height, this height here, A plus B, will give you the area of the trapezoid. So this formula is the area of the trapezoid as is clearly mentioned. And she simplifies that. Well, a times b times a, or a plus b times a plus b, uh, she said is a plus b squared. And we didn't really talk about this, uh, but this is a correct line. Like a times b, if I have two of those, I'm counting two. And I have the half out front. Everything is perfect up to here, and she's using variables. So a key part with um, proofs is if you use only variables, and you've kept it as general as possible, you haven't made any weird restrictions, it is a perfect proof. You have proved it for an infinite number of those shapes. But all of a sudden, now Penelope's like, okay, well, I don't know what to do. So she chooses A to be three, B to be five, C to be 5.5. And this is where she kind of goes astray. It's why it's not a rigorous proof. She's now saying, okay, I'm, I'm plugging in numbers here, plugging in three and five, uh, A plus B, um, and then I get 32. So, okay, the entire area of the trapezoid is 32. I'm going to follow along with her proof, and then I'm going to talk about the question. So she's saying the area of the triangle is half a, uh, base times height. So A times B is base times height, and then take half because it's a triangle, not a rectangle. And then she again makes the mistake of plugging in numbers and says, okay, that's uh, 7.5 centimeters. Okay, and there are two of these triangles, this triangle and this triangle. So if I double 7.5, I get 15 centimeters. So we now know that this is... Uh, 7.5, this is 7.5, and then the whole thing all together is 32. And she says, oh, well, I can figure out this triangle right here by subtracting these 7.5 and 7.5 from the entire area that I've calculated back here. So that's what she's doing. She's saying, um, oh, she's eventually going to be doing that a little bit later. But she, right now she's just saying, okay, I can, I can find what um, C squared is. 
I, I know what C is. I, I assume that it's 5.5, and you can actually find that it's 5.5 if I do Pythagorean theorem, I assume. I guess we should verify that that is actually correct. I'll do that in a sec, but she's saying, okay, I, I use Pythagorean. Oh, wait, you can't use Pythagorean theorem. You're supposed to use Pythagorean theorem. That is a big problem with this proof that I totally did not even think about. Where did this come from? How did she get 5.5? Well, yeah, you can use Pythagorean theorem to find it, but she just chose it out of thin air. That's a huge problem. Because if I actually use Pythagorean theorem, I'll get 3 squared plus 5 squared is equal to c squared, and that's going to be 9 plus 25 is equal to c squared, which means I'm going to get 34 is equal to c squared. That means that if I square root both sides, I'm going to be c is equal to plus or minus square root of 34, and obviously we're in the positive number. It's impossible to have a negative length. Ignore the negative. What is the square root of 34? Square root of 34 is 5.83, and it goes on and on forever. So that is incorrect. She assumed, and that makes an ass out of you and me, or whatever that statement is. So that doesn't work. That's a huge, huge problem with this proof. She had to assume what C was. Um, so she's assuming, hey, C right here is 5.5, which you're not allowed to do. But assuming that you knew that, then yeah, she calculates that it's half of C squared, because this is a, a square. And then, because that's also C, C times C is a square, and then half of the square will give you the triangle, half of the square will give you the area of the triangle. And she says, okay, if I add all of them together, if I add up this triangle, this triangle, this triangle, this triangle, this triangle, which is that triangle right there, two of them, plus this one um, gives me, wait a second, there's another giant problem with this proof, check it out. 15 and 15.125 gives us 30.125. Is that equal to 32? No. <laughs> It's not. And another big problem with the proof, those don't actually equal each other. So, here are the solutions to number one. Um, I need to make my font slightly smaller here, maybe 14. Um, let's change it to right there. Okay, so what connects Penelope's diagram to the Pythagorean theorem? Um, the fact that we are relating the lengths of a right triangle to one another. That's the, the general idea. Um, the lengths of a right triangle. Um, is Penelope's reasoning convincing? Well, at first, she had a convincing way of finding uh, the area of the trapezoid and triangle, but then she had she incorrectly assumed what the length of C was. And the final line is a huge error since 30.125 does not equal 32. This is not convincing at all in my opinion. You might have a slightly different interpretation. I'm sorry that my lines are lined up perfectly. I wonder if I make my font a slightly bigger, then it will line up better. Um, 16. That looks a little bit better. 17? Will that make it line up? That looks a lot better. Oh, wait. Come back. Make you 17. 17, and then I can maybe extend this line so that it fits a little bit better. Um, Make this drag over a little bit. There, I know it's not the best, but there it is. Um, explain how Penelope could improve her proof. So if she's just stuck purely with variables and didn't assume what C was, it would have been a beautiful proof. It would have worked. So if she didn't assume what C was, or didn't assume any of them, if she didn't assume any of the lengths and kept only kept only the variables then she could have proved this algebraically that's the main thing so um, let me actually show you how that proof is going to work. This, I'm realizing, this is now going to be a long video. Maybe you like Penelope's proof. How could she have done this better? Um, so, from here, we have this. The area of the trapezoid, perfect. 
in variables. Area of the triangle, I'm leaving it as one half a times b, and I want to do two of them. So two of these one half a times b is two times a half is one, so it's just a times b. So two triangles, let me zoom in here so I can actually see what I'm writing. Two triangles is equal to just a times b. Okay, well now if I find the other triangle, the other triangle is indeed one half c squared. So I'm gonna circle all the information um, that I'm using here. One half c squared, perfect. So let's add these two triangles to this triangle and I get all the triangles together. So I'm adding this triangle is one half, one half a, b. This triangle is one half a, b. And then this one was one half of c squared. So I'm just adding these all together, right? So let's see what happens here. Do I have some room off to the right hand side? So I'm trying to make sure that I get to this on the right hand side, but let's see what happens. I'm going to add a, b, and I'm going to add one half c squared, one half c squared, and somehow that should equal this thing right here. So um, I can expand this, right? So one half a, b squared, well this a, b squared is the same thing as a plus b, a plus b using my general rectangle or my tabular method. This is a squared, that's b squared. a times b is a, b, a times b is a, b. There's two of these a, b's, so this is equal to, I still have the one half out front, let me copy that down. This is equal to, maybe I have to run out of the room, this is one half, and then all of this stuff together. So it's a squared plus two a, b, no, don't end the parentheses, plus b squared. Okay, let me go ahead and distribute this half. So if I distribute that half, I am left with um, one half a squared plus a b uh, plus one half b squared. I just distributed the half into each side. And that's still equal to a b plus one half c squared. Well, check it out. I have an a b on the left and the right, an a b here and here. So let's subtract a b from both sides. Boom, boom, gone. And now I have this equation. Let me write it down. Now I have one half c squared is equal to one half a squared plus one half b squared. Oh, that's almost there. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Just multiply both sides by two. Multiply by two, two, and two. And when I do that, c squared is now equal to a squared plus b squared. That's how you actually do this proof. On to the next one. Nadia. Nadia's method is very, very similar to um, what we did for yesterday where we slid the triangles. But instead of sliding the triangles, she uses pure algebra. Not very well, because there's always a mistake, but she does a good attempt. So we assume now that this is a right, tri or a right angle, because I've proven that before. Um, so this is c times c, c squared. Perfect, so that's what she's saying. That area is c squared, perfect. Uh, this area of the triangle here is 1 half a, b, base times height, and then half. And then I have four of those. If I do that, four times a half is two, so two a, b. So all four of the triangles, so far so good. And she's only using variables. She's not assuming any lengths. And she says, okay, the total area of the entire shape right here, well, it has a side length of a plus b, a plus b, and then I square it. So I should get a squared plus b squared. No, this does not work. And we showed this before. So I did up here, a squared plus b squared is this diagram. a squared plus b squared, I'm missing 2ab. Notice up here I had a 2ab a right here. That's the term that she's missing. So if she put the 2ab, she would have been correct, but she still wouldn't have finished her proof. She still has not shown a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I don't see that anywhere written down. What she needs to do now is she needs to say something along the lines of this. She needs to say now big square minus the four triangles. So the I'll do shapes like this. Triangle, um, triangle, triangle, and triangle. If I subtract all four of those, that will be equal to that, that inner diagonal triangle, which is c squared. So how do I do that? Well, the big square, we just figured out the big square is this one. So a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. All that big square, and then I'm going to subtract all four of those triangles. Hey, area of all four of those triangles is 2ab. So minus 2ab. And that should equal this inner square, the area of the middle square. 
c squared. All right, well, check it out. A, 2AB, 2AB, cancel out, and I'm now left with A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. That's how I could have improved her proof. So coming down here, describe the method Nadia used in her proof. She's basically doing the same thing that we did, but algebraically. So she is um, subtracting four right triangles from a larger square to find um, to find the medium square, I should say, to find the medium square, all with algebra. So, and that's maybe not the best way of explaining that I'm realizing, but it's the, the gist that I want you to take away is it's the same thing that we did all the way, I don't know where my slides are, all the way back here where we had this thing and we moved these triangles down in order to make two different squares. This one is a geometric proof, and then up above, I'm doing an algebraic proof. So is Nadia's reasoning convincing? Um, no. <laughs> uh, she did not square A plus B correctly, and then forgot to subtract the triangles from the larger square. Basically, she didn't finish her proof. So how could she improve her proof? Well, um, she could um, square A plus B correctly. And by that, I mean just add 2AB, just like we did up here, just add the 2AB, and then subtract the triangles from the larger square to get the area of the medium square. Cool, I'm just re-explaining what we did up here. Big square minus those four triangles to get the medium square. Um, that will give, uh, I, don't, I don't need to write that. I was gonna say, that will give you the, the final proof, but that is the final proof, all right. And then finally, Sophie. And this is kind of where we le left off in class. I just gave the explanation of what Sophie was doing, and then I'm expecting everyone else to solve. So. Um, Sophie, she starts with a right triangle. You can see that there's a right triangle right there. Um, it's a little bit dark, but there it is. And then she said, okay, the side length of that is a square. That means a squared. This is an a times a, this is a squared. B times b, this is b squared. And check it out. These four triangles should add up to these four triangles. And it is. This triangle is congruent to this triangle, which is congruent to this triangle, which is congruent to this triangle, which is congruent to this triangle, this triangle, this triangle, this triangle. This triangle. All of these triangles are the exact same size, shape, etc. They're all congruent to one another. So I can just say, hey, one plus two plus three, oh, one plus one plus one plus one, four times. There are four triangles there. There are four triangles there. Therefore, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. I mean, it's, it's convincing logic, right? But there's an error. What is the error, Mr. Sunil? The error is that we had to assume, and I'll write this up here, had to assume that A and B were the same size. This length and this length were the same size. If they were not the same size, I would be getting some weird wonky triangle that looked like that, and it's no longer, I mean, it's still gonna be a, a square, or still gonna be a, um, a triangle, but these triangles will now be different size. That triangle is now different than this size triangle. They're not congruent, which means this triangle will be totally different, and there's no way to prove that. So the problem is we have to assume that, and this is only proving it for a special case. Um, how do we say that in words? What type of triangle does Sophie use? Um, whenever this length A and this length A are the same, so if I had to draw a diagram, um, this type of triangle where this length and this length are the same, that's called isosceles. And not only is it an isosceles, it's a, a right isosceles. So that's the, the formal name. Let me go ahead and type that in here. She is using right isosceles triangles. And isosceles is a hard word to spell, but I think I got it right. Triangles. And all of her triangles are congruent. That's all you have to say. Okay, is Sophie's reasoning convincing? And the answer is yes, it actually is, yes. But 
but it only proves the Pyth capital P Pythagorean theorem when A is equal to B. So if A and B have different lengths T T H then we need a different type of proof like in the previous two examples like uh, Nadia and whatever their names were like Nadia and Penelope those two proofs were for any general case A and B um, this one had to be A and B uh, they had to be the same size. I might as well just put A and A there. So essentially, you're proving this. You're not proving um, A squared plus B squared. You're essentially saying A squared plus A squared. They have to be the same length is equal to C squared, or alternatively, 2A squared is equal to C squared. And this is a proof of C squared is equal to 2A squared in the case where you have a right isosceles triangle. It's perfect, but it's just not general enough. So how could you, exp how could you improve your proof, Sophie? Um, she... Bernie Sanders message. Uh, she could have A and B have different different lengths. I can spell G L E N G T H lengths. Um, length A and length B, I guess. And even if you did different lengths, then it's really hard to prove all of a sudden. Um, but that's a, a good first step. And then finally, you need to do this page. This is your homework. All the way to page S-6. Um, you don't need to do this page. You can ignore it. We're not going to do this. You need to turn in your packet on Monday with S-6 completed. So I'll help you. Well, actually, no. I don't really want to give the answer away in this case. Whose solution do you find most convincing? So. Um, obviously, we found um, the completed proofs for Nadia and Penelope, um, but without us helping them, which one did you find most convincing? Or maybe you want to treat this as a different question. You can modify this question on your own if you want. If you actually completed the proofs, which one did you like the most and why? Did you like the one that uh, kept it really general um, using pure algebra? Did you like the one where uh, she tried to plug in numbers? Did you like the the one where you just use congruent shapes. Which one did you like the most and why? Why is the big part? Like, you can probably just answer, like, Nadia. But then the why should be the majority, the bulk of this question. Well, I like the idea of, what did Nadia do? I like the idea of using pure algebra in a simple way or something like that. Um, but you can choose whatever you want. It doesn't have to be Nadia. And then produce a complete and correct proof using your preferred method. And it doesn't have to be any of the four different proofs that we've gone over. It could be your own proof. And again, I really highly encourage you, just Google proof of the Pythagorean theorem and see what other people have. It does not need to use algebra. If you want grid paper, I mean, I didn't give it to you, but you can just um, do your general shapes on like a blank piece of paper or something. It can be using geometry and sliding shapes around. You can cut out pieces of paper. Just Google proof of the Pythagorean theorem. Eventually, you'll see one that looks really cool or really interesting and use that on your quiz or on your test. You are going to have to give me a proof. Um, so you're going to have to memorize a proof. So this is the chance to start memorizing one of those proofs. Again, you can just, if you're lazy, you can just copy down Mr. Sindel's proof right here or Mr. Sindel's proof right here. Um, but I really hope that you'll go out and explore math on your own. Um, that's all I have for you guys. I will see you guys on Monday.